All right, so this is a video that's just going to showcase a simple method to locate an epicenter from one to three different stations. The whole goal here is so that you understand specifically how you do this step by step. So what I have here is three different seismograms from three different stations located based off of city that are going to be on a map that will be on the back side of this page which we'll get to in a few moments. What I need to do first though is I need to find the variety of arrival times. Now these are when the seismic waves, or in this case the P and S waves, first arrive at a station. So what I'm going to do is with these seismograms I have listed here P and S wave arrival times with a variety of different times. Each of these starts at two hours 30 minutes and 0 seconds. How that setup is like so, where I have hours, minutes, and seconds. What I'm most concerned with though at this point to find distance is the minutes and seconds. We'll get back to the hours moment when we figure out exactly when the earthquake started. So what I got here is I see that I have 2 hours, 30 minutes, 0 seconds. These large lines right here represent whole minutes. Each of these individual sections represents 10 seconds apiece. So just for example, this one right here would be 2 hours, 31 minutes, and 0 seconds. This one here would be 2 hours, 31 minutes, and 40 seconds. So when I go over here to the P wave, I'm looking specifically where the P is. I'm just going to take a straight edge here and bring it down to my time bar here. If you look right here, it hits perfectly this line that is represented for 31, 32, 2 hours, 33 minutes, and 0 seconds. I do the same thing for the S wave and in the purposes of what we're going to work with here it is going to be best to get this to the nearest tenth of a second. As in, if we look right here, this is going to be just off one of the 10 second lines. This will be more reference for 2 hours, 35 minutes, and 10, 20, 30 seconds. I could do the same thing for these other sections here, but we're just going to stick with Chicago. I take what I found on those sections and then I just transfer it to these boxes here. So the P wave arrived at Chicago at 2 hours 33 minutes and 0 seconds. The S wave arrived at 2 hours 35 minutes and 30 seconds. The difference in arrival time is the S wave arrival time subtracting the P wave arrival time. So what I need to do here is just set up, and I'm just going to use my scratch paper here. I'm going to do 2 hours, 35 minutes, and 30 seconds, and I'm going to subtract 2 hours, 33 minutes, and 0 seconds. Now, when we're subtracting here, it's going to be difficult to actually use a calculator because remember that we're talking about either base 100 versus base 60. This is what we normally use in math class. This is what we are going to be using since this represents time. All right. Now if I do my straight subtraction here, I don't need to do anything. I see right here that 30 will subtract beautifully with the 0. 35 minus 33 will also subtract. Again, I mentioned before I don't need to worry about the hours because those cancel out right away. So I see 30 minus 0 is going to be 30 seconds. 35 minus 33 is going to be 2 minutes. This is my difference in the arrival time. So I'm going to transfer that here to the difference in arrival time is 2 minutes and 30 seconds. I could do the same thing here uh, for the arrival times that I would find from Tampa and also for Wink. Again, we're going to stick with Chicago, and now we're going to focus on finding the distance to the epicenter. 
this is where I have to go to the reference tables, the earth science reference tables on page 11. You see right here now, this looks like a very intimidating chart. In reality, it's actually set up rather straightforward. If I look right here, I have on my y-axis the travel time in minutes. Each of these small lines represents 20 seconds. So this would be 20 seconds, 40 seconds. This would really be 60 seconds, but because we like to round up, 60 seconds translates nicely to one minute. Then one minute, 20 seconds, one minute, 40 seconds, and so on. Now, if I wanted the odd number of values for the seconds, it would be basically directly in between these lines, as in 10, 30, and 50 seconds. The bottom here has the distance the station would be from the epicenter. Now, I see right here, it's times 10 to the third kilometers. So that we're aware where that is coming from is that times 10 to the third km is the same thing as thousands of kilometers. So what that means is if I have one times 10 to the third kilometers, that is the same thing as 1,000 kilometers. That's just so you're aware that they actually will put this on the reagents either way, in the scientific notation or in the expanded format that we have here. We're going to stick with this. Uh, we're going to do both of them, but I'm going to stick with the expanded format. So when I'm translating it, just realize that the one here represents 1,000 kilometers. This represents 2,000 kilometers. This represents 3,000 kilometers, and so on. Now, these each of these little lines right here represents 200 kilometers, or if you remember in the expanded format, it would be 0.2 times 10 to the third kilometers. The odd values would be directly in between two. So this would be 200, 400, 600, 800, 100, uh, one, excuse me, 1,000 kilometers. This would be 100 kilometers, 300, 500, so on. So I can get a variety of different distances here. What I'm going to do, and that's going to be referencing this difference in the arrival time that I originally found, the two minutes and 30 seconds. The way that this chart is set up is that this space that is in between the P wave and S wave travel bars is that I need to find the space in between here that is going to match two minutes and 30 seconds. How I do that is I need to take a scrap piece of paper, which I just happen to have here. Doesn't matter what it could be. It could be just a small little slip of paper. Or it could be even the edge of the piece of paper that you're working with. All right, I'm going to put it almost directly on top of the travel time bar on the y-axis. Now, I'm going to make a mark at zero so that I know exactly where zero is. And then I'm going to go up one, two minutes, and then I got 20, 40 seconds right here. 30 is going to be directly in between. Now that I have these small little marks, I'm going to then, I'm just going to make these a little bit more predominant. That way we can see exactly where they're going to go. What I do now is I take this to the P wave line and I have one notch basically keep in contact where I'm going to find eventually this top line is going to meet with the S wave travel bar. So if I go up like so, eventually I'm going to meet at a point where they match. Okay? So if I look here, I think I got a pretty good one right here. This looks like it's roughly going to be about 1,400 kilometers. How I know that is first off, I see that the top notch here is in direct contact, as in not just a little bit, but completely in contact with the S-Wave travel bar and the bottom one is still in contact with the P-Wave travel bar. This space in here should match 2 minutes and 30 seconds. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to read the distance that this matches and I'm going to place it in this box here. So if I read straight down 
and put it right here, that's going to be 1,000, 1,200, 1,400 kilometers. Always remembering to place down my units. P wave travel time is going to be relatively straightforward. Notice I have not moved this piece of paper. I'm going to read from where it hits. I'm going to move it across my pencil and I see that it hits directly on three minutes. This bottom line, remember, is the P wave travel bar. You can see that, that it's still referenced here. So I'm going to label here three minutes and zero seconds. Just for good measure, I also would want to double check to make sure that this is the appropriate time. So if I look right here, this is th three minutes, zero seconds. Up here, if I were to check the S wave travel line, I see that it's pretty much just directly in the middle between five minutes and 20 seconds and five minutes and 40 seconds. So the S wave took for this station five minutes and 30 seconds to travel there. I'm going to do my double check by subtracting these two, the one that represents S and the one that represents the P wave. The 30 minus 0 is 30 seconds. 5 minus 3 is 2 minutes. And you see right here, this matches what I have here in the difference in the arrival time. So I know that this distance of 1,400 kilometers is the, what I am specifically looking for. The last thing to fi figure out for Chicago before I bring it down to this map here is the time of origin. The time of origin is literally when the earthquake first started. Now, I'm going to have to take my P wave arrival time of 2 hours, 33 minutes, and 0 seconds. I'm going to just place it down right here. So what I'm going to do is I need to take the P wave arrival time that I have abbreviated PAT and subtract from it the P wave travel time, PTT. So I'm taking this time here and subtracting this time here. So this will look like 2 hours, 33 minutes, and 0 seconds. I'm going to subtract 3 minutes and 0 seconds. The zeros go right down. 33 minus 3 is 30 and 2 comes down. So this earthquake first started at 2 hours, 30 minutes, and 0 seconds. By the end of this, I should have all three of these stations matching in the time of origin. Each of them will have different travel times, distances, difference in arrival time, and obviously different arrival times. So, Assuming I have also done these two other time frames, I'm just going to show you what I need to do by taking this distance here. And I need to just use this compass. Now this particular compass, this is going to be my center point. And I'm going to be matching it up with one of these series of holes that will match a particular distance on the bottom. I always use the provided scale. And notice that I have all of the stations listed here. Chicago, Tampa, and Wink, Texas. So the first distance I have is 1,400 kilometers. So I put my brass center at zero. I'm going to find which hole matches 1,400 kilometers. And I see it's this small little hole here. So I'm just going to make a little note that it's the fourth hole from the end. I'm then going to bring the entire compass up to Chicago. I'm going to count the one, two, three, four holes, and then I'm just going to draw a circle that represents one, two, three, that represents every point that is going to be 1,400 kilometers away from Chicago. This is going to be the process that we call triangulation that is eventually going to have something from Tampa and from Wink that is going to get wherever my epicenter is going to be. 
I need the three circles because all three circles are going to intersect at one point. All right, so once again, this is just a re refresher to understand how to find arrival time. My difference in the arrival time, distance from the epicenter, P wave travel time, and the time of origin. Remember, it's a good idea to do the double check where I can make sure that where I'm finding on the reference tables, the distances in between this space here matches what I identified from the difference in the arrival time. Thanks very much, and have a good day, and think Earth Science always.